Today we are breaking the negative cycle that you consistently find yourself in. And I know you know what I am talking about. There have been several times in my life where I've embarked on something new, I got really excited about it, did research, started setting a plan in place, hit the ground running at about 80 to 100% and slowly snowballed myself into burnout. And let me tell you guys, it was not fun. And if you have spent much of your adult life feeling the same way, then I'm going to help you make that change. In today's video, we are going to take a look at your daily habits and refine them. And I want to give you some reassurance. I am not sitting here telling you that you are someone that needs to do and be better. You are not a self-improvement project. You are a person who simply wants and deserves more for yourself in this life. Whatever goal you embark on, I want you to embark on it with very positive energy, very uplifting energy to get you through and to get you to the other side. I'm going to be sharing with you guys seven ways to be more disciplined and more consistent in your daily life. These are things that have helped change my life and have helped me avoid burnout, which is the most important thing because I never want to experience that ever again in my whole life. Okay, without further ado, let's get into this video. Okay guys, we're gonna start with improving our daily cues. Your daily habits mold the person you are trying to become. The thing is, you can want to have a productive reset routine. You can want to go to the gym three to four times a week. You can want to improve your relationship with your family and friends. However, if you don't set yourself up to achieve those things, it is not going to happen. In BJ Fogg's Tiny Habits, he writes, the recipe for behavioral change is composed of three ingredients, motivation, ability, and prompt. Start with the simplest behavior and get it down before taking on more, which is why your daily cues are so important. A cue is an event that triggers a habit. It serves as a signal to begin. For example, your alarm serves as a signal to get up and start your mindful morning routine. Your workout clothes being on display signals going to the gym and exercising. An app that sends you motivating quotes signals gratitude and reflection. However, prolonged absence of these cues will lead to your individual habits slowly subsiding. So over time, if you stop setting the alarm, you're going to be waking up later and later. If you stop laying out your clothes, you're going to be bargaining with yourself on whether or not you truly want to go to the gym. And once you stop getting those motivational quotes, the reflection and the gratitude go out the window. <laughs> you need your daily cues to help boost positive habits for a better routine and more consistency and discipline in your life. No matter how big or small these cues are, you need to look at them as non-negotiables in your life to get closer to your goals. Next, we're gonna talk about resetting at the start of each week and at the start of each month. I am definitely a reset girly. I love my Sunday resets. I love my monthly resets. I love my weekly resets. It just honestly helps my world feel a lot more structured, and productive. Researchers have dubbed this the fresh start effect, which I just love that so much. It says that people are better at tackling their goals when they start on so-called temporal landmarks, i.e. the start of a new year, the beginning of the month, the beginning slash end of each week, okay? Deep down, we're all reset girlies, right? Your reset routine should be curated to what is important to you. For example, budgeting, deep cleaning, checking in with your spouse and seeing if you guys are on the same page and how you guys can better support each other. This should also be a time to refocus on your goals and set intentions to get closer to these goals month to month. I've been doing monthly resets on my channel for a long time. And one thing that I've noticed month to month when I watch those resets back is that I am consistently getting better mentally, physically, and I'm watching myself consistently get closer to my goals because I'm consistently revisiting them at the start of each month. It also makes me look at my life and appreciate day to day. It makes me appreciate the start of a new month. I used to dread the beginning of the month 
because mortgage was due, rent was due, all of those things, okay? But now I look at it as a fresh start and I'm so excited every month to move into a new one despite mortgage being due, okay? But it helps me not just look at my days as just never ending and just bleeding into the next one and the next one. It's just, it gets me excited for life. I make new plans. Michael and I set travel plans. We get really invested in our daily routine and we set new goals and intentions each month and it's amazing. If you do not set yourself up to reset at the beginning of each week or at the beginning of each month, you will slowly start to see yourself falling off of your goals and you'll slowly start to see the excitement of your goals wear off. So it's not enough to just say that you wanna to stick to a budget. You need to have numbers that you're trying to stick to so you can start building consistency in that area. You are trying to eat out less and grocery shop more and your budget is not reflecting that, you will be able to see that and change that. So next we're going to talk about reigniting our spark to learn. The thing is guys, the more I've moved away from life as a student and moved deeper into life as a real adult, I found myself losing the spark and the love of learning that I once had, especially once I left education overall. And that makes me really sad because I'm someone who loves committing to being a student of life. And I shared this tip in one of my recent videos, but I realized I didn't give you guys many examples of how to commit to learning in your life. If you're looking for a platform that promotes learning, I think a great one to invest in is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes led by professionals in multiple industries like film, productivity, design, and so much more. So y'all know I've been moving into being a Notion girly. I've been trying to leverage Notion to up my productivity. However, I'm very much confused on how to use the platform. So I took a class titled Notion for Beginners, Build a Life Dashboard for Personal Productivity by Mike and Maddie, who are doctors and YouTubers in the space. In their class, I've basically learned everything that I need to know about Notion for beginners, I learned how to customize my dashboard and make it more aesthetic and personalized to me and how I can leverage it and be more productive in my everyday life. One thing that I love that Skillshare has added is that they've created a way to streamline your experience through learning paths. They basically give you a curated streamlined playlist for you to follow and it makes you feel like you are starting off as a beginner and moving into being an expert in that field it's very interactive you're not just sitting there and watching videos all day and being lectured to for hours they give you writing prompts you're able to print out worksheets to follow along and it's very interactive if you're someone who's very hands-on and you're just trying to Stop scrolling all day long. Skillshare is going to be the app for you. The first 500 of you who click the link in my description box will get the first month free. So click the link in my description box, try Skillshare out for free, and let me know how you love it. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. Next, we're going to talk about refining your reflective practices. Reflecting on your past decisions, including your mistakes, can provide you with valuable insight that can guide your future actions and choices. A recent study done in 2017 investigated whether or not self-reflective reasoning can have a casual effect on yourself and identity. In the end, they found that individuals with high traits of self-awareness seemed less affected by prompts to engage in self-reflective practices. And individuals with low traits of self-awareness showed a significant impact when prompted to engage in self-reflection. Huh, isn't that interesting? I remember when I first started my reflective practices through gratitude journaling and like the five minute journal, it was life changing to me because I was finally reflecting on my days, on my weeks, on my life. And I was finally learning how to make changes to become better. And slowly over time, I have seen my life change. Now, I started journaling almost five years ago. And as I've gotten older, reflective practices aren't as significant to me. They're still important, but they're not as significant to me because it's become a part of my life, my daily life, my monthly life, my yearly life. Like I'm consistently, I'm consistently reflecting. And that's a good thing. In summary, the study provides 
Evidence suggesting that engaging in self-reflective reasoning can indeed have an impact on one's self and identity. The thing is, the reason why this is important is because we all have that friend who does not seem to have a reflective bone in their body. Things are always happening to them, their world's always falling apart. The thing is, without proper reflective practices, that could easily be you and I. <laughs> now I am leaning on more advanced reflective practices like therapy and free writing and shadow work, which is basically journaling about aspects of your life that you tend to deny or avoid. Still love the five minute journal. I still highly recommend it. But over time, you're supposed to graduate to more challenging things. It's supposed to be a stepping stone. Having better reflective practices can help you look at your personal journey, dissect it, process it and see what went wrong before embarking on a new one. So I highly recommend refining your reflective practices, start small and gradually build from there as the years go on. Next, we're going to talk about how to maximize productivity in a nutshell. I did a whole video on this called how to be more productive. I'm going to link it in the cards above. Make sure you check out that video after you check this out. But a strategy that I've been following recently is splitting up my days into three categories maximum productivity, moderate productivity, and minimal productivity, otherwise known as light work. And this is a way for me to be more consistent in my day to day, because to be completely honest, we cannot give 80 to 100% every single day. It is not possible. Some days you will only have 1% to give. Some days you will have 30% to give. Some days you will have 50% to give. But it's important to structure your weeks out in a way where you can follow a sustainable productivity structure. On Mondays, I like to ease into things, okay? Those are my moderate productivity days. I'm planning, I'm getting started with my week. I'm looking at my week at a glance and figuring out what I want to achieve and how I'm going to achieve it. Tuesday, I hit the ground running, right? At maximum productivity. Wednesday, I bring things down depending on the week and depending on how I'm feeling. Sometimes Wednesdays will be low productivity days or light work. Sometimes they'll be moderate days. It just depends on the week and how much I have to get done. Thursdays are typically my max productivity days. Okay, I hit the ground running again on Thursdays. And then Fridays are typically moderate to light work, depending on how much I have to get done. And then Saturdays and Sundays I chill. But as you can see, it is a journey. It's a roller coaster and it's helped me sustain better habits. It's helped me sustain my habits over time. And that's the way you should be looking at it. Not every week is going to look the same. My hair looks so crazy, guys. I'm sorry, I'm getting it done tomorrow and I cannot wait. So even on the days where I'm giving minimal effort, I'm still giving some effort and I'm not losing my routine in the process, okay? I'm holding on to a little bit of control. I'm holding on to a little bit of routine. This definitely helps for people who have project-based jobs. This helps for people who are self-employed, Oh, this has changed my life. This is my first year being self-employed and it has definitely been a huge adjustment, especially because I used to be a teacher. I used to be a cheer coach. I worked, I've lived so many different lives, guys. <laughs> I worked in a hospital setting. I worked as a medical scribe once upon a time. I, and shout out to my medical scribes. Shout out to all of my medical professionals, my nurses, my PAs, my nurse practitioners, my MDs, my pharmacists. Shout out to y'all respiratory therapists, CNAs. You guys keep the world going round and round and I don't know what we would do without y'all. So shout out to y'all. Then I was a teacher, cheer coach, all these things, taught biology, forensic science, quit education after the pandemic and moved into banking. I was a part-time teller while doing social media on the side. And this last year, I was finally able to take my social media career full-time. This productivity practice has helped me really maximize my focus throughout the day and day to day when it comes to managing my career as a content creator. So I hope this helps. I'm sorry if you can hear my dog growling. Next, we're gonna talk about celebrating the small wins. If you've struggled to work out consistently and this past week you have mustered up the courage to 
pull out your walking pad and walk while working three days out of the week. That might feel small to you because you didn't go to the gym and you didn't get this big sweat in, but that is still something worth celebrating, especially if you have not been able to muster up the courage to even walk into the gym, to go outside and go for a walk. It's something that you've been wanting, but you just couldn't do for yourself. Robert Brault was quoted saying, enjoy the little things for one day you may look back and realize that they were big things. And that makes me so emotional because we do not realize how much of an impact those first steps make in our lives. You went grocery shopping, meal prep for yourself, stuck to the meal prep for the last week. That is the beginning of something much more beautiful that is about to happen. And once you get to the end, you will realize that the hardest part of this journey was the beginning. You will realize that the hardest part of this journey was starting was getting yourself into a mental place to take the first steps. In a recent video, I was chatting with you guys and thank you guys so much for the love on that video because it gets me so emotional, I can't even I was talking about how I haven't been able to post consistently on my channel for a long time. And instantly, just talking about it instantly brought me to tears because this is something I have been struggling with for so long and I have been slowly trying to build myself up to a place of being more consistent here because it's something that I used to be very consistent with. And last month I was finally able to post like six or seven videos and I haven't been able to do that in so long and it brought me to tears because only I know the struggle that I have been going through with being more consistent and finding a strategy that works for me on this channel. That is a win. It felt so small when I said it, but it was such a big deal. And I decided to go treat myself that day for achieving that because it may feel small. It may not be post worthy. We are in a society where if it's not a car, if it's not a house, if it's not a graduation, then it is not post worthy. It is not worthy of celebration and that's so sad because i feel like we've moved into a place where our day-to-day -day lives aren't worthy of anything it's just mundane and when you focus on the journey and less on the destination you will find yourself being more consistent and more disciplined within the goal that you are trying to achieve so focus on the journey celebrate all of the wins along the way you deserve to celebrate. Okay guys, lastly, we're gonna talk about taking out the trash. This has helped me so much in my day-to-day -day life. Decluttering my life overall, decluttering your mental space, decluttering your physical space, distancing yourself from friends or family members that make you not feel the best and that bring negative energy over you, especially on the days where you're trying to be productive. I'm not saying cut anybody off, but distancing that energy when you are trying to be productive is really important. And I know we can only do so much distancing from certain people in our lives, but really, honestly, taking control of your mental health is the most important thing. And that was the best thing I have ever done for myself in my life. The best thing I have ever done for myself is just literally taking out the trash, distancing myself from people who just cause a lot of chaos in my mind, in my life, taking long social media breaks, taking breaks from TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and just resetting my mental and physical space overall. Whatever this means to you, take this advice and run with it because taking out the trash in so many ways will help refresh your spirit and your mind and help you hit your goals with more clarity and it will ultimately obviously help you be more disciplined and consistent oh, guys we did it i hope this video was helpful for you this was so fun for me to make this one took me a long time to script out because i really wanted to be intentional with what i was going to say and whatnot so let me know how you liked it down below i'm sorry i'm not sure if the mic setup was very um aesthetic but i've been getting comments about my audio so i just i don't know you're just gonna have to see the mic and it might have been a little 
foggy in the beginning, but we're working on it, guys, okay? We're working on it. Let me know if you have any questions down below. I so do appreciate your support always. I appreciate you for joining me and taking the time to listen to all my rambles and my stories and whatnot. And I am so proud of you. I know you are going to hit all of your goals this year. We're doing it together, okay? So let's get our energy up. Let's get that positive energy up. And let's move into the rest of this week with more encouraging energy and less negative energy, okay? Bye, peace out Girl Scouts, see you later. <laughs>